Hello, First Robotics students. I'm going to try to explain a little bit about how this command-based programming system works and how we've organized the code for the 2023 season. Um, first off, if you haven't read through the um, WPI lib uh, documentation, I would suggest you spend some time reading through the command-based programming section here. Um, but first, so how is the code organized? Um, based on some suggestions from Chief Delphi, uh, we have a main function, and that main function will look for a file on the RoboRio, and that file needs to be either 4360 or 7048, and that will determine what robot is being configured. And that was based on a suggestion that um, Last year, we just had a, a configuration in a f configuration file, but if somebody was to accidentally grab the wrong laptop or tweak that code, you could potentially deploy more hits code to Fargo's robot and vice versa. But by having this file on there, that never changes when you do it once and you never have to change it again. And now it automatically picks the right robot configuration. And if you read the readme file in the code, that'll explain how to get this file onto the RoboRios. So main then starts the correct robot, either robot 4360 or robot 7048. So let's just pick one at random here. Let's do robot 4360. Um, so today, as of today, the robots have the exact same subsystems. I suspect that these will change over time. But the way this works is that you have these subsystems that encapsulate or contain all of the logic necessary for the gripper subsystem or the LED subsystem or the drive subsystem or the elevator subsystem or whatever other subsystems we want to put on the robot. And then all you put in the robot 4360 or robot 7048 code is the configuration, the commands between the subsystems and your inputs. Um, so let's take a look at this code and I'm just gonna get rid of this. So most of this is just the import stuff for importing different Java libraries. Uh, and then the robots are always based off of this timed robot class. Um, and so here's our robot class and it inherits, it gets a bunch of functionality from this timed robot class. Uh, we define one Xbox controller. We might want to define two Xbox controllers depending on how we're going to drive the robot. And then we create the different subsystems. So we'll, we have a, a drive subsystem, which I think will be the same between Fargo and Moorhead this year. Uh, we'll have a gripper subsystem, which we might have to have uh, two different grippers based on the, the configurations. Um, elevator. The elevator could potentially be the exact same. Uh, even though they're driving different things. Um, and then an LED system. This was Rory's suggestion that we are able to turn LEDs on to signal to the other player if we want a cone or if we want a cube. So then in the init function, we actually create our Xbox controller. Um, and then what we're doing is we're using this command-based system. So here what we're doing is we're getting this generic joystick button. So don't think of that as you know, something that has to be for a joystick. This is really uh, just encapsulating the logic of, of a button, and it allows us to do these command-based uh, mechanisms. So what we're going to say is we want to create a joystick button. Just think of it as a button. Uh, we want to create it from controller one, and we want to get, the it's an Xbox controller, we want to get one of their buttons, we want to get the A button, then we want to get the value of that A button. So we're going to assign that to the A button. We have a B button and an X button. Then we create these commands. And here's where last year we had a for loop where we just say, is the A button pressed? OK, do this. Is the B button pressed? OK, do this. Is the A button no longer pressed? OK, don't do that anymore. And now all we have to do is we just have to say, if button A, when it becomes true, uh, then we just want to run the gripper open command once. And so this is just a one-time thing that happens. So this is more like what the Fargo robot's going to do. So when you hit that button, the gripper's going to open up until it hits the limit switches, and then it'll stop. 
or if the B button is pressed, then once we're going to run the close function, and that's going to drive those motors closed until it hits the limit switch. Um, here I have an example. If the X button goes true, we're going to turn the LED, red LEDs on, and if it goes false, we're going to turn them off. Um, so then we get to, to a little bit more complicated command. So here we just want to create a generic command. And once again, if you read the documentations, commands kind of have four different things. They have a uh, an init, what should I do before I start running these commands? An execute, what should I do when I'm running this command? A is finished, is this command done doing what it's supposed to be doing? And then a, um, I think an interrupt, um, what might cause this, what could interrupt this thing to stop it? So here we're just creating this command, and the run command has nothing for the init. It always is not done, so the is finished function always returns false. And then we're going to give it, and, and this syntax is kind of funny. This is called a lambda. A lambda is just a way of writing like an inline function. So we could have just had a function that said, you know, void, arcade drive, so on and so forth. Um, but it's a little bit difficult to, to hand that function off to this run command. So we use something called a lambda. So this lambda is just a generic lambda. We want to capture everything. And then we're going to call the robot drive. So this is the drive subsystem. We're going to call the arcade drive, which is the way of steering the robot with a forward and back and a rotation command, which is what we'd use for the Xbox controller. And we have to invert the left Y and invert the left X to get the robot to drive forward and turn right and left. And then the last thing we do is we say, what is the requirement? What thing do you require to run this command? And that's this robot drive system. So what this is essentially doing is uh, capturing that robot drive system so no other command can use it. And then we just assign that to this run command. We have the same thing for the gripper. So we have an open and a closed once again, this is more for the Fargo robot. They can open the, the gripper to hit the limit switches. They can close the gripper to hit the limit switches. Or they can slide the gripper left and right. Um, and so we have buttons to open and close, but we'll use an axis command to, to slide it back and forth. And uh, for for the Fargo folks, this left trigger is just a... I just threw it in here. So obviously for the actual robot, we'll have to do some human factor studies with the drivers to see what works best. Uh, the rest of this is just publishing some things to the network table so that we know what position the driver station is plugged into. And after that, it's pretty simple code. So, um, oops. So here we have, you know, when we're in the teleoperated mode, we're going to continually schedule this drive command. Likewise, we also want to tell this command and just say, hey, schedule it. So anytime we're doing teleoperated, these two commands will, will kind of run all the time. Uh, we have to have this robot periodic to call the command scheduler. That's just boilerplate code. After that, we get into the autonomous mode. And uh, this is a, still a work in progress. We'll have to figure this out. Um, hopefully, yeah, we'll have to figure this out <laughs> in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and that's really it. The drive subsystem is really kind of complex, but you don't really have to worry about it. Um, this just configures the different motors, configures some encoders, um, and then adds a bunch of functions to try to handle autonomous modes, um, which are not quite working right now, but uh, I'll save that for another video. Uh, elevator subsystem today is just super simple. Um, we'll just call a rotation and an extend, and that'll just we'll continually call this based on these values. We'll drive the rotate motor and the extend motor. Uh, the gripper subsystem. This is kind of based off of the Fargo design. Um, so when the close gets run, we're just going to print close grabber. Eventually, we'll drive some sort of motor. Uh, open. We'll run this once, and we'll open the motor till we hit the limit switch. And then the slide gripper. We're just going to have a dead zone, which means if the Xbox controller has some noise and is drifting, we don't want our gripper to like drift left and right. So we're going to have a dead zone where the, the value has to go beyond this number 
and it's configurable in our configuration file. So the number, the absolute value, so it either has to go greater than some value or less than some value. And then we'll come in here and we'll run the left and the right motors. Um, that's really all I had to show today, so we'll try to do some more videos in the future. Thanks.